Coming up, Florida owns the one title every team wants, but the Gators are a completely different team. Will anyone be able to stop the Trojan horse, which has become a Southern California powerhouse? The Big Ten could find itself with a return to glory. Or will we see something completely different? We're at the site of the national championship game, ready to break it all down on Countdown to College Football. Welcome to the Topperson Sports Desk and Countdown to College Football. We are at the home of the 2008 BCS National Championship game, the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. I'm Paul Crane, alongside the NFL's premier talent evaluator, whose work can also be found at NFLDraftScout.com, Dave T. Thomas. And we are about to get you ready for college football like no one else. And Dave T., I love this time of year. Oh, this is my favorite time of year, too, Paul. Everybody out there has hopes for the BCS title. Let's see who comes down January 7th to visit us here. Well, let's take a look at your preseason top 10. We see a number of schools that we find in other preseason polls, but we see some that we don't, like you've got Hawaii in your top 10. When you have a quarterback thrown for 5,500 yards and 58 touchdowns, somebody has to recognize the talent out there, Paul. Well, that's Colt Brennan, and Georgia is a top 10 school as well. After losing to Vanderbilt in Kentucky last year, Mark Rick is cracking the whip. This is a team on the move. And I can't help but notice no schools from the state of Florida are in your top 10. No, but I do have four of them in my top 25. Of course, my favorite is South Florida with Joe Montana clone down there, quarterback Matt Grothy. Well, no surprise that USC is number one and Pete Carroll has put together a real juggernaut after winning at least a share of back-to-back -back national championships, then reaching the BCS title game again. The Trojans were poised to be part of the picture for a fourth straight year until UCLA shocked the world in the season finale last year. The Trojans lost players to the NFL and suffered through the untimely death of place kicker Mario Dinello. But make no mistake, the team, which has had three of the last five Heisman Trophy winners, may have another in quarterback John David Booty. And the Trojans definitely have another team with enough talent all around to play for the national title once again. You know, I, th I think there's always pressure at SC, you know, especially being the quarterback and all the expectations that we have. But uh, I think it's something that you really can't think about and uh, lose sleep over something. You know, you just got to know that that's part of it. And I, I think it motivates me, you know, to work harder each and every day when I am out on the practice field. You know, we've never asked our quarterback to be the whole show in this offense. I mean, it's a balanced attack that calls for the quarterback to be like the point guard and distribute the ball, and, and uh, that's what we're asking John David to do again, but he's, he couldn't be more prepared. Uh, this is the same kind of buildup that Matt had and, and, and uh, Carson had uh, with all of the background and the history in the offense, and also we're expecting big things. Well, the SC schedule does have some interesting road games. The trip to Nebraska in mid-September should provide a test. There are games at Notre Dame and Oregon in back-to-back -back weeks in October, but Dave T, the toughest test may well be a November game at Cal. But don't forget the season finale against UCLA. We know what happened last year with that game. Oh yeah, but there are many who like the Trojans' chances of running their table, and not everyone is happy with their schedule. That does not include a conference championship game, especially some in the SEC. It's kind of a, a, an offhanded comment that spoke to the ease of getting to the game. It's difficult for every team. There is no easy way. There is just harder. And we just seem to think that with a championship game with a, a great opponent at a neutral site in the midst of the voting for who gets to play in the game, wow, just a little harder. I mean, for me to say, that I don't believe that the SEC, SEC conference is, is better than the Pac-10, eh, probably I would say that. Well, Les Miles had made some comments at a booster function that got blown way out of proportion, but Dave T, I pretty much agree with a lot of what he's saying, but do you think now he's in a mode of perhaps jockeying for position in case he ends up with one loss out of the SEC, he can still make it here for the championship? I don't think one loss is going to get you over here, but he is putting up some good bulletin board fodder. <laughs> USC and LSU folks, January 7th, right behind me. And how about the Trojans? They're loaded for talent. You think those two teams are going to be They here. have 16 ball players that are probably going the first day of the draft. That's enough talent for me. 
well. We'll talk about both teams at length in just a few minutes, but college football has seen a number of significant coaching changes during the offseason. Butch Davis is now at North Carolina. Randy Shannon has taken over at Miami, and our good friend Jerry Glanville is now the head man at 1AA Portland State in the big sky. But no change may have a bigger ripple effect than Nick Saban's hiring at Alabama. Signed to an unprecedented collegiate salary of about $4 million per year, Saban left the Dolphins in a whirlwind of controversy. I don't know how else I can say it, guys. I've said it three different occasions, and I don't know how else I can say it. And I don't know why you keep asking. I don't control what people say. I don't control what people put on .com or anything else. So I'm just telling you there's no significance, in my opinion, about this about me, about any interest that I have in anything other than being the coach here. You just say, I have no, I'm not going to be the Alabama coach. I think I just said that. Did I not say that? No, Why didn't I say that? Well, you didn't say it in those words. Well, then I guess I have to say it. I'm not going to be the Alabama coach. Thank you very much. I can't tell you how pleased and honored I am to be your coach at the University of Alabama. You know, comments like that remind me of Richard Nixon during his days in the White House. I am not a crook. <laughs> well, I can't help but think that the controversy was overblown, that Saban was pushed into a corner. Why should he have his business done in public with the media, though he was ill-advised to say the words, I will not be at Alabama. However, seems Dave T. like he's already paid dividends, 92,000 plus at the spring game. I was there. College football's never seen anything like it for a spring game. How do you think he's going to do? Well, how am I going to think he's going to do? He's going to make a bunch of moving men rich. He's got the only guy with moving men on his circle of five. <laughs> well, I look at him over here, and I just say that he changes addresses too much. He scares me. Well, we'll see what happens. He certainly has to win. But the NFL, what kind of effect is this going to have on the NFL, perhaps now being gun-shy to hire college coaches? Look what happened this year with the hiring pool. Most of the men that were hired for a head coaching job were assistants. We have getting scared. First Steve Spurrier, now uh, Saban over here. It's going to scare people off on the college coaches. It may rest on the shoulders of Bobby, uh, Bobby Petrino, Petrino and the Falcons now. But stick around. We are just getting started. Still ahead, more conference breakdowns, including the Pac-10, where everyone's trying to catch USC. And we'll run down the leading candidates for the Heisman Trophy. Downtown to College Football is brought to you by Topperson. Heal the damage that causes the pain. For more, visit them at topperson.com. Buy the Florida National Championship DVD. Celebrate the Florida Gators' historic National Championship victory. Order your copy of National Champions by calling 877-208-4567. Countdown to Sports is proud to support Foundation Fighting Blindness. For more information, go to www.fightblindness.org. Some called it impossible. It was unattainable. It was unthinkable. Yet these players showed the country that when you play like a team, with unselfish sacrifice, anything is possible. The Florida Gators have won the national championship. Totally dominate Ohio State. They won it back to back national championship. These teams gave Gator fans the greatest gift of dual national championships. You can own a piece of these historic achievements, reliving the greatest highlights from this past season of Florida Gator football and basketball. National Champions, the story of the 2006 Florida Gators, follows the football team on their journey to a national title. Back-to-back -back National Champions takes you through the 2007 basketball season. Own a copy of these once-in-a-lifetime DVDs. Back-to-back -back in National Champions with special features and exclusive locker room access back to back in national champions available at best buy in north florida and online at bestbuy.com hangovers affect millions of responsible social drinkers research shows the culprit is a chemical called acetaldehyde believed to be 30 times more toxic than alcohol itself introducing cheers hangover formula named the best hangover cure jane magazine says each drink produces toxic buildup in your body cheers helps flush it out so you won't feel like crap the next day so-called hangover remedies like chaser consist of activated charcoal and have no effect on alcohol cheers proven science-based formula helps combat hangovers before the damage is done trying is believing Cheers has made a huge difference in my life because I can actually socially drink now with friends and family and I'll never have another drink again without Cheers. 
My job sometimes calls for me to drink with clients, but with Cheers, I never miss a beat at work the next day. Cheers is a safe and side effect free nutrition supplement, but does not affect inebriation or lower BAC. Enjoy responsibly. Call 1 800 470 9795 right now or go to CheersHangover.com. Think before you drink. Order Cheers now. Welcome back to New Orleans and the Topperson Sports Desk. Topperson, heal the damage that causes the pain. As we get ready to count down to college football with a look at the Big East Conference. You know, a couple of years ago, after losing Miami, Virginia Tech, and Boston College, there were calls for the Big East to lose its automatic berth to the BCS. Well, we don't hear those anymore, especially with the Big East having two legitimate contenders for a national championship. Our Big East cream of the crop, the West Virginia Mountaineers, coached by Rich Rodriguez and Dave T, with a powerful offense led by quarterback Pat White. With his nimble feet, his mother's money was well spent on his ballet lessons, Paul. Well, he leads that offense, which should be able to score points against just about anyone in the country. The offense in such good shape, but the defense may be the question. Five new starters on the front seven. Defensive tackle Cleveland Dykes will have to step up his play this year. But this team is all about offense first, led by that dynamic quarterback. The expectations are definitely high. I mean, for this year, since Coach Rod has been there, the expectations have been high. He's definitely turned the program around for us and turned us into a, a national championship contender and one of the best teams in one of the best conferences in America. Well, it is very good, and our best of the rest in the Big East, the Louisville Cardinals, where former Tulsa coach Steve Crankdorf takes over for Bobby Petrino, who left them a very good team, Dave T, led by quarterback Brian Brown. And with wide receivers like Harry Douglas, Mario Uritia, this is a ball player over here. I don't want to be a low-flying pigeon over that stadium. Or Urudia, everyone works. So does running back George Stripling. But the defense, led by linebacker Malik Jackson. Malik Jackson will hit you so hard, your grandchildren will be born with bruises. <laughs> well, the Cardinals will probably go as far as Braun can take them. Uh, individual goals, you know, they really go hand-in-hand -hand with my team goals. I want to win the Big East. I want to go undefeated. I want to go to the BCS Bowl national title. Uh, I really don't get caught up in the numbers and you know touchdown passes, yards. I really don't like to set any standards on those. I just want to do what it takes to win the game and uh, to make sure our team's successful. Well, now that you're overrated and underrated, overrated the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, coached by Greg Schiano. I didn't think they were one-hit wonders, but they've got a great running back still in Ray Rice. Ray Rice is sorely going to miss Brian Leonard. Everybody's going to see that Rice is not the explosive runner that he was last year. Well, the Knights also have quarterback Mike Teal coming back this year, but on the defensive side, they're led by end Jamal Westerman. Eight sacks last year, along with Eric Foster. They have, uh, definitely have some big boys up front. Well, now to your most underrated in the Big East, those Bulls of South Florida that you talked about earlier, coached by Jim Levitt, and with that quarterback, Matt Grothy. Matt Grothy, to me, like I said, is the second coming of Joe Montana, well poised in a pocket, mature behind his ears, and look at that arm strength that he has. Well, on the defensive side, linebacker Ben Moffitt's a good one. You know, they talked about Steven Nicholas last year. I'll take this four-year starter at middle linebacker, or most middle linebackers in the league. Well, the Bulls, as you take a look at your projected order of finish, the top of the Big East are right there, along with the Cardinals and Mountaineers, your projected Offensive Player of the Year, Steve Slayton of West Virginia. We'll talk about him more in just a moment. But as we look at the rest of the Big East, your projected Defensive Player of the Year, Woodney Tureen of Louisville, the top junior college player in the nation. Louisville fans will get to notice him right away in the season opener. 25 pass deflections, eight interceptions. Where did they get him? College of Sequoias, and that's ridiculous. <laughs> Recruiting. Well, it reminds everyone that as long as you can play, they'll find you. They as we continue it. to talk about the Big East, you think there are some coaches on hot seats, especially Pittsburgh's Dave Wanstead needs to win this year? Two great recruiting classes, Pat Bostic coming in at quarterback, but if they don't make it to a bowl game, Wanstead's gone. But then look up at Connecticut, Randy Etzel with all of the academic problems, Greg Robinson up at Syracuse, a lot of coaches on the unemployment line. Well, that's the way of college football at times in this day and age. But as we look at a particular player, we promised more and go back to West Virginia 
for it. The speedy tailback for the Mountaineers, Steve Slayton. He is a good one. Love the way this kid runs, but I wish he would show more explosion hitting the hole. This is the type of ball player over here that we'll probably see him get his 1,700 yards again, but he's coming off a of wrist surgery. Well, the Mountaineers need him to stay healthy as well. Moving on to the ACC, after the ACC's first year of expansion, it set a record for most first-round draft choices from one conference with 12 and led the way with 51 players drafted overall. Last year was considered a down year for the ACC, but things are looking up once again. Our ACC cream of the crop, the Virginia Tech Hokies. And Dave T, I don't think there's any team in America that means more to its campus this season than Virginia Tech does to its coming off the wake of that terrible shooting tragedy last spring. But on the field, the offense, led by running back Brandon Orr and quarterback Sean Glennon. Sorry, USC fans, but if I had to take the man for the Doak Walker Award, Brandon Orr would be my man right now. Well, the offense looks good. Defense looks really good as well. Several good players, including linebacker Xavier Adibi. This is a ball player in a Derek Brooks mold. He will attack, he will kill, he will search and destroy your quarterback. But year three in the ACC, the Hokies are hoping this year will bring them their first title. I think we got a chance to be a good football team, but because we have a chance doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be a good football team. Uh, I think our, the offense will be better. I think it kind of hinges on our offensive line getting better, but I think we are. Uh, I think we got good perimeter people. Uh, I think uh, Sean Glennon uh, needs to manage the ball game, which he'll do better this year than he did last. And, and we won 10 games uh, with Sean as our quarterback last year. Moving to our ACC best of the rest, Florida State, new offensive coordinator Jimbo Fisher, part of an unprecedented offseason of change on Bobby Bowden's staff, five new coaches, four on the offensive side, but they need to pick a quarterback, Dave T, between Drew Weatherford and Xavier Lee. If either Weatherford or Lee are in at quarterback, I know an NBA ref right now that will probably be getting on the opposition. <laughs> well, while the offense still has those questions, the defense of Mickey Andrews always has plenty of good talent. Oh, definitely, but look at Alex Pawson. How did he do that last year? Ten starts, eight tackles. He's got pictures on his coach, Paul. Well, the perception is Florida State has fallen recently, but perception may not be reality. Uh, Sixteen years ago, we got into the Atlantic Coast Conference. They got us into the Atlantic Coast Conference to try to pull the football up to us, not to pull us down to them. Now, the, the conference has responded They've come up to us. We haven't dropped that far. We might have dropped a little bit, but you got, they've come up there is what the problem is, you see. Well, Bobby Bowden always makes sense, but now overrated, underrated, you've got his overrated Tommy Bowden's Clemson Tigers. He's got a great backfield with James Davis and C.J. Spiller. But in the ACC, Paul, you live and die by your aerial attack. He has Venus to Milo, a quarterback. Well, while they try to figure out the passing game, the ground game looks great. And on defense, pretty good looking defensive end in Philip Merlin. Oh, Philip Merlin to me, they talked about Gaines Adams last year. By the time he's done, Phil Merlin will spice pass or pass anything that Gaines Adams did. Oh, wow. On your underrated side, your underrated team in the ACC, NC State, now coached by Tom O'Brien, who left Boston College. Gave patience to Tom O'Brien. Look how well he turned around the Boston College program. He's going to need a year or two to find a quarterback. Once he does, this team will be swimming again. Well, his new team beat his old team at the buzzer a year ago, but they've got a great defensive lineman in Demario Presley. Demario Presley, you see what he did last year? Got to the quarterback seven times, six times the quarterback had to leave the game. <laughs> well, he would be the latest in a long line of defensive linemen there as we look at the projected order of finish in the Atlantic Division and your projected Offensive Player of the Year, Brandon Orr, but at the top of the Atlantic, you've got Florida State back there again. You know, Bobby Bannon is over the Hill coaching gang. They saddle up one last time for that ride into the sun. They've put a lot on this season. Looking at the Coastal Division, you've got Virginia Tech finishing ahead of Miami, but the Hurricanes have one great defensive player, at least, in Calais Campbell. And also Phillips in the backfield. Randy Shannon is going to continue to try to restore his team to his old glory. Well, as we continue to talk about the ACC, we mentioned how Butch Davis is now at North Carolina, where football is important again, but a coach that you think might be on a rather warm seat is Al Groh at Virginia. When you have your son running an offense that finishes 100th in the, in the nation last year, it's time for nepotism to stop. Al Groh will be out the door if his uh, son repeats. Well, speaking of sons, there's a pretty good defensive player at Virginia. 
Howie Long's little baby boy, Chris Long, rated a top defensive player in the draft among seniors. Well, one ACC player we want to focus on in particular is a defensive back at Florida State, Myron Roll. You like this guy. If I had to choose one player in college football to build my team around, it's this 19-year-old. Ronnie Lott has been a measuring stick for defensive backs. He's faster, he's smarter, he's quicker, and he's a whole lot better looking. All right. Well, still ahead, the race for a record that may never be broken. And the two men still as competitive as ever, Bobby Bowden and Joe Paterno. But up next, a look at the Big 12, which is as competitive as any conference in America. And then there's the SEC. Countdown to college football continues in a moment. Want the hottest real tones for your mobile phone? Check out Thumbplay. Join today and get three bonus real tones. Just text T57 to 48000 for Akon. Get both thugs in harmony. Text T58 right now. We've got over 16,000 real tones from the best artists like Shop Boys. Just text T59 to 48000. Load up your phone for just $9.99 a month. Standard message and charges may apply. Just text to log on to thumbplay.com and get your three bonus real tones. Next stop for your mobile phone, Thumbplay. For more on the conference breakdowns and Dave T's analysis, be sure to visit youtube.com slash TV. Welcome back to New Orleans and the Topperson Sports Desk. The Big 12 has belonged to Texas and Oklahoma in recent years, both having won national championships and in the case of Oklahoma, reaching more than one national championship game. But the conference is more than just two teams now, but our cream of the crop is still one of the familiar faces, Bob Stoops, Oklahoma Sooners, and he's got a real good running back replacing a great one, Alan Patrick replacing Adrian Peterson. Oh, they're not gonna lose much with Adrian Peterson there, but even though with Alan Patrick as their feature back, watch freshman DeMarco Murray coming on board. Of course, quarterback will have many, many questions for this team. On the defensive side, though, they've got a corner who also returned kicks, Reggie Smith, he's a good one. Everybody calls him the best boundary cornerback in the country. Our scouts say if they move him to free safety, he'll be even better. And look at the way he returns punts also. Wow. But the Sooners move forward with an inexperienced junior at quarterback, a redshirt freshman, and a true freshman in a battle that'll be key. Well, I think the biggest question to, for us to have the year we want to have is will the, the players you know, particularly on offense around our quarterback play better. If, they, if all the players that are coming back that have experience will improve and play at a higher level, they're going to really boost our quarterback position. And then that's the other question is who is going to be the quarterback. And, and that needs to be, you know, earned on the field and we need time to do that. Well, our Big 12 best of the rest, Mac Brown's Texas Longhorns and Dave T. Colt McCoy now has a full year of experience under his belt. Yes, but Colt McCoy will need that offensive line to gel for him. If not, he's going to look like Humpty Dumpty at the end of the season. Well, Lima Sweet, a great receiver, but that line's going to be key to the kind of year running back Jamal Charles has. But on the defensive side, plenty of talent as well, especially a big guy in the middle, Derek Loki. Derek Loki, this is a ball player that could simply take down two or three blockers at once. However, he's coming back from a broken leg. Well, the Longhorns are looking to return to the top of the very tough Big 12 South. Well, sometimes we say that our division is the best conference in the country, so that's, that, that is the way people feel. But uh, our standard's been set really high over the last six years for a year at Texas. We've won 10 plus games each year, and that's not going to change. Our fans expect that, our coaches and players expect it, and, and now we're, we're very comfortable with those expectations. All right, you're overrated, underrated, overrated Texas Tech, coached by Mike Leach, who loves to throw, but he's got a good running back in Shannon Woods. 1,808 yards last year. However, he has been in the doghouse. He's fourth on the depth chart. But you look at that defense, Paul, 86th in the country. That's tough to uh, beat. 
Well, quarterback Graham Harrell, Mike Leach's first returning quarterback since 2002. You mentioned the defense could be the key, Dave T, but they've got a good end in Jake Ratliff. Jake Ratliff, probably one of the only two quality players they have on that defensive side of the ball, but it's going to be for a long season up at Tech Lane. Well, your Big 12 most underrated team, the Missouri Tigers of Gary Tinkle, and he has a fabulous quarterback in Chase Daniel. Eight and five, he was sipping champagne, gets a contract extension. He'll be around in time to see Daniel break all the Big 12 records. Well, Daniel looks like a good one. Another team that could be key to defense, and they've got a guy in the middle named Ziggy, Ziggy Hood. They say that Ziggy Hood, if you put him out there, he will simply annihilate any center or guard in front of him. Well, as we take a look at your Big 12 Conference projected order of finish in the North Division, you see Nebraska winning it, followed by Mizzou, but your projected Offensive Player of the Year from the South, Darius Bowman of Oklahoma State. 60 receptions, 1,181 yards, and he has the most dangerous quarterback in the conference in Bobby Reed. Well, as we look at the projected South Division finish, you've got Oklahoma State in the middle of the pack, Texas A&M, a brutal road schedule at Miami, at Texas Tech, at Nebraska, at Oklahoma, at Missouri. The difference for the Aggies might be defensive lineman Red Bryant. The coaching staff says that no one player is more critical to the success of the team than Bryant this year. And up next, the conference many consider the best of all, the SEC. Countdown to college football is back in a moment. are the ultimate songs of faith. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that. These are songs of the ultimate love. Lord, I lift your name on high. Time Life presents Open the Eyes of My Heart, today's greatest worship anthems. Open the eyes of my heart. You'll hear Michael W. Smith, Mercy Me, Chris Rice, Darlene Check, today's biggest Christian artists. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows. 22 songs of power. Come, now is the time to worship. 22 songs of passion. God of wonders beyond our gap. Call now to get Open the Eyes of My Heart on two CDs for just $19.99. Word of God speak, would you pour it down like rain? But wait, order with your credit card and we'll take $10 off. Now I know my Redeemer. That's two CDs for just $9.99. Hallelujah, grace like a rain. Then preview other inspirational albums. Satisfaction guaranteed. So call now and get Open the Eyes of My Heart on two CDs for just $9.99. Call 1-800-696-3038 to order Open the Eyes of My Heart on two CDs for $9.99 plus shipping and handling when you use your credit card or order online at timelife.com slash open the eyes. Welcome back to New Orleans and the Topperson Sports Desk. Topperson, heal the damage that causes the pain. In the relatively new world of college football champions, the only teams to win a BCS-type national championship with one loss are Florida in 1995, LSU in 2003, and Florida again last year. The common denominator? They are all teams from the brutally tough SEC. And our Southeastern Conference, cream of the crop this year, is LSU. Les Miles lost a ton of talent to the NFL, Dave T, but he still has plenty where that came from, but has to have Matt Flynn replace quarterback Jamarcus Russell. Crown not only has to turn Matt Flynn into a BCS quarterback, but with Ali Boussard bolting during fall drills, he's going to have to make sure that Keelan Williams turns into the next Harvey Williams at tailback. <laughs> You're right, Gary Crowton. 
the new offensive coordinator has work to do, but Glenn Dorsey there on defense, and Chavis Jackson, Dorsey in particular, you like a lot. There is no more dominating factor in college football than Glenn Dorsey, probably the most dominating defensive tackle since Warren Sapp. So then perhaps the biggest question will remain quarterback, but your best of the rest, the Georgia Bulldogs, coached by Mark Rick, and they have a quarterback in Matthew Stafford with a year under his belt now as well. Mr. Rick says that Mike Bobo will handle Stafford this year. Being a former quarterback, I see Rick having his handprints all over Stafford. He'll pay attention. A lot of running backs, including senior Craig Lumpkin, who's healthy now. But on the defensive side, the secondary lost a lot, but strong safety Keelan Johnson is back. Keelan Johnson's back, but you know to play safety in this game, you have to start hitting. We mentioned Lumpkin, but he's one of several talented backs at Georgia. An underrated day T, your most overrated in the SEC, Phillip Fulmer's Tennessee Volunteers, despite having senior quarterback Eric Ainge back. Yeah, but if you haven't won a title since 1998, I mean, Phil Fulmer's been given more chances than Bill from Hillary. I hear a sound coming out of his office, and it's tick, tick, tick. That's a time bomb going off. Well, on defense, they've got linebacker Jared Mayo and one of the best free safeties in college football and Jonathan Hefner. And he's going to have to elevate his play even more, folks, because he's got three newcomers in the secondary with him. Well, for Tennessee, having a senior quarterback is one thing, but fixing the nation's 96th-ranked running attack is another. We need to be able to run the football better than we did last year. You know, we, we threw it pretty well. We caught it well. And at times, we had, we had games when we ran well, but you know, against we had negative yards rushing against Florida. And he, I mean, you're not gonna win games when you do that, you know? So I think you'll see us make more of an effort to run the football. Now, I think that's what the no huddle will come into play some, you know, getting us in the, you know, myself and Coach Cut getting us in the right plays. Well, now to your most underrated in the SEC, we find the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier, and his South Carolina Gamecocks with quarterback Blake Mitchell. Boy, for an offensive genius like Steve Spurrier, for him to try to find a quarterback. Mitchell is just occupying time over there. Watch the ground game with Mr. Boyd being the major focal point for the SEC this year. Well, Corey Boyd and Mike Davis make up a pretty good backfield and a good ground attack. But on defense, they've got a good one in the middle in linebacker Jasper Brinkley. They got two sets of twins on that defense, but Mr. Brinkley, you are seeing double when you see him on the field because he's going to give you double vision. Best linebacker in college football. And his twin, Casper, is also a linebacker. As we look at the SEC's projected order of finish in the East, we see the Bulldogs followed by Carolina, but you like Kentucky quarterback Andre Woodson as a good one. Andre Woodson is a dangerous quarterback in this league, and he has the tools to work with him. Running back Raphael Little wide receiver Keenan Burton. You are going to have to defend the Wildcats. Quick Georgia no kicker Brandon Cattu is drawing attention from the NFL. Tremendous attention from the NFL. Paul, they're liking him to Sebastian Janikowski when he came out of FSU. On the SEC Western Division side, LSU is your winner. Auburn in the middle of the pack, but you do like defensive end Quentin Groves. Oh, when he hits you, you know you've been hit. He could put a donut hole in the middle of a quarterback. One player we want to pay attention to comes on the Florida side, the reigning national champions, have a big change of quarterback as well, Dave T. Tim Tebow, as a true freshman, played in situations a year ago. Now he's got to play every down. Classic scramble, but he does have a good quick release. I like this ball player down there. I think that you're going to see the aerial attack continue, especially with Andre Caldwell coming back a wide receiver. Oh, Bubba Caldwell returning for his senior year was a big, big deal for Tebow and the Gators. More conference breakdowns still ahead, but up next, the granddaddies of them all and their unreachable achievements, Bobby and Joe Pa, as Countdown to College Football continues. Hi, I'm Nancy Kerrigan. My mom's struggle to see inspired me to work with the foundation fighting blindness, and so did the story of this special family. Me and my brother will both go blind maybe one day. Without the foundation fighting blindness, we would just be lost. Please join me and help the foundation fighting blindness lead the charge against diseases such as retinitis pigmentosa and macular degeneration. Call 1-800-235-4004. Thank you. Some called it impossible. It was unattainable. Yet these players showed the country that when you play like a team with unselfish sacrifice, anything is possible. The Florida Gators have won the national championship. They've won it back-to-back -back national championship. 
own a copy of these once-in-a-lifetime DVDs, back-to-back and -back national champions, with special features and exclusive locker room access, back-to-back and -back national champions, available at Best Buy in North Florida and online at bestbuy.com. Welcome back to the Topperson Sports Desk and New Orleans, home of this season's BCS National Championship game. I'm Paul Crane, alongside talent evaluator Dave T. Thomas, as we continue to count down to college football. Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden starts the season with 366 career wins. Penn State's Joe Paterno is three behind at 363. These are the two coaches with more wins than any other at college football's highest level. Paterno is 80 years old. Bowden will turn 78 during the season, and neither is showing signs of slowing down. Mike Neighbor has more. They are literally two of a kind, Bobby Bowden and Joe Paterno, two coaching legends who are chasing the single most important coaching mark. You talk about unbreakable records. Good luck to any coach trying to climb Mount Paterno. Now look, you guys got to put a drive together now. Or Mount Bowden. You got to beat them up physically early. To wear him down. I've always admired Bobby because I think he's an honest guy. Uh, he's a good family man. He stayed with Florida State when he's had other opportunities to go other places, and I've admired that, his commitment to a university. And hopefully I've had the same kind of uh, attitude towards what, uh, my what my role or my profession is. Come on, take off now. Let's go, bro. Two of a kind who have weathered the same coaching storms recently. Both legends have heard an earful from the critics who have made it clear they should hang it up and retire. All right, let's one more now. I'd rather coach than retire. You know, now there's two things that's got to be involved in that. One is my health, which se seems to be good. And then the other, you got to win enough ball games. I can't go th through many years like I did last year. I hope I never get to the point where I'm not excited about a football game. If I get to that point, then I'll, I'll get out of it. So just like two drivers heading for the finish line, these two of a kind legends are waiting for the other one to blink. Record that you have for all-time wins, and you and Joe are, you know, uh, neck and neck right now. When you guys, you know, have retired and, and have moved on, will that ever be broken? You think oh, the you, way coaching is today? Well, the only ever, well, you, you, it, the trend doesn't look like it, you know, because there's nobody close behind Joe and I. And uh, but way thing, all records are broken sooner or later. It seems like, doesn't it? I am not surprised about anything that happens. I haven't got the slightest idea how many guys are out there in their 70s. There's a guy out there in the Midwest, Judge, who's won 400, 390 games. You think I go to bed thinking, God, how many guys are there as old as I am coaching? I go to bed thinking, God, I can get up tomorrow morning and coach. They share an awful lot, this dynamic duo. Nobody has been better in bowl games. Nobody has been more consistent. And when it's all said and done, Nobody will be able to conquer this college coaching equivalent of Mount Everest. Well, Bowden and Paterno are such good friends, and they represent all that's good about college football. And a real tribute to each of them, Dave T, is the fact that both have already been inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, despite each still being active. And these guys have been around so long, Paul, when they first started coaching, they were lighting the playing field with candles. <laughs> were they really? <laughs> well, I know whoever ends up with a record, it will never be broken. Bobby Bowden hones the NCAA record for most consecutive seasons with 10 wins or more at 14. Somebody could win 35 years, 36 years in a row, 10 or more, and they still won't catch either of these guys. That's an amazing feat. Well, we will move on now to the conference in which Joe Pa calls home. It's the Big Ten. And we've got some familiar faces and some up-and-comers. But one place where nothing shy of a conference title is going to be accept acceptable is where we find our cream of the crop, the Michigan Wolverines, coached by Lloyd Carr, who has four-year starters at some key skilled positions and a great wide receiver in Mario Manningham. Manningham is a great receiver coming off of injury problems, but having Chad Henning to get him the ball, this is going to be a nice little connection on offense. Well, the other part of the senior connection would be running back Mike Hart. He's a good one. And the defense has several solid players, led by tackle Terrence Taylor. Oh, it's like a Jeopardy commercial when I talk about Michigan defensive tackles. Okay, here's my Jeopardy question for you. 
Gabe Watson, Alan Branch, Terrence Taylor. You know what the answer is? Name the most overrated defensive tackles in Michigan history. Oh, that's icy cold. We mentioned the four-year starters. Well, for them, this is it. For us seniors, we haven't uh, won a bowl game or beaten Ohio State. So, I mean, we're look yeah. So, I mean, we definitely have sour taste in our mouth and uh, want to finish it off on the right way. And, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to try our hardest uh, every, every game to prep and uh, be the leaders out there on the team and uh, hopefully get to that point at the end of the season and be in it to win it. All right, JT, now to your best of the rest in the Big Ten, the Wisconsin Badgers of second-year coach Brett Bielema. He lost quarterback John Stocko and offensive lineman Joe Thomas, his new quarterback, fifth-year senior Tyler Donovan. When well, the best thing your coach could say about you is that you're a gamer, it's sort of like finding out that your blind date has nothing but a personality. <laughs> well, how about running back P.J. Hill? He's back. Dropped 20 pounds in the offseason, but he dropped the ball seven times last year. Had some mediocre performances. I got to see consistency. On the defensive side, I know the Badgers have a corner you like, Jack Ikeguanu. My top rated defensive player, period, in college football, the second coming of Roger Worley. That is high praise. You're most overrated in the Big Ten, the Purdue Boilermakers of Joe Tiller, quarterback by Curtis Painter. You know, Tiller's team reminds me of the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz, if only they had a heart. Oh, if only they had a heart. On the defensive side, coming off the edge, they do have Cliff Averill. Cliff Averill, to me, is a quality rush defensive end. Watch him play the same way that Anthony Spencer played last season. Wow. You're most underrated in the Big Ten, the fighting Illini of Ron Zook. He changed recruiting in the SEC, doing the same in the Big Ten, perhaps, with quarterback Juice Williams. Juice Williams, probably roaring in sushi at the quarterback position, only 39% pass completion. He'll excite you, but he'll also frustrate you. On the defensive side, the Illini do have linebacker Jay Lehman. Jay Lehman, who's considered the hottest hitter in the Big Ten Conference. I'll take the kid from OSU. Well, if we look at your projected order of finish at the top of the Big Ten, we're talking about Ohio State, not number one anymore, but hard hitters and good linebackers. They do have James Laurinaitis. Oh, what a rush when I see that guy tackle. <laughs> His daddy, road warrior animal. You can see that the genes don't uh, stray far from the pool over here. His dad, Joe, was a tag team wrestler, now with the WWE. Looking at the rest, of your Big Ten projected order of finish. We can see the bottom part there, and no surprise, your Defensive Player of the Year is Ike Guanu from Wisconsin, but a player you want to focus on, one of those seniors we talked about at Michigan, the quarterback, Chad Henney. This is a critical year for him. Critical year for him is no question about it. This is a ball player who lacks mobility, lacks the quick flick, you can't blame a quality offensive line for that for giving up so many sacks that they did last year. Well, the time for Henny, Hart, and the rest of the Wolverines, as we mentioned, is now. Up next, a look at the Pac-10, which has some good teams and at least one great one. And the players who may want to think about New York hotel rooms in December. Countdown to college football is back in a moment. Want the hottest real tones for your mobile phone? Check out Thumbplay. Join today and get three bonus real tones. Just text T57 to 48000 for Akon. Get Bone Thugs and Harmony. Text T58 right now. We've got over 16,000 real tones from the best artists like Shop Boys. Just text T59 to 48000. Load up your phone for just $9.99 a month. Standard messaging charges may apply. Just text to log on to thumbplay.com and get your three bonus real tones. Next stop for your mobile phone, Thumbplay. Thermospas custom designs hot tubs for therapy along with entertainment and today has engineered a revolutionary swim spa called the spa trainer large enough to accommodate 12 adults a powerful current allows you to swim endlessly while the other side provides the ultimate hot tub experience in the spa trainer you control the intensity and best of all it's self-contained so it's ready to use the day we deliver it call to receive a free dvd and a 48 page brochure to learn all about thermospas luxurious hot tubs and swim spas Call now and we'll include free delivery, a $450 value, free chemicals, a $150 value, and a $400 cash coupon. This $1,000 offer is free with no obligation and is valid for one year. Call 800-925-7997. Thermospas, luxurious hot tubs made affordable.
The Pac-10 conference has definitely improved. As many as six or even seven teams could end up being ranked before this season is over, with many playing stand-up non-conference games where they could earn more recognition. But the Pac-10 still looks to be USC's world, with everyone else just living in it. Our cream of the crop in the Pac-10 is Pete Carroll's USC Trojans and Dave T. He is loaded for bear once again, especially at the tailback position. One, two, one to Chauncey Washington and C.J. Gable. Now it goes one, two, three when they had the best running back in the country in Joe McKnight. The rich get richer. That, oh, big hitting defense as well. Ray Maualuga. Now, Ray has a deal with opposing quarterbacks. If they can pronounce his name, he won't kill him during the game. There's been 11 deaths uh, cited in Pac-10 conference history. They probably take that deal. The Trojans are ready to go. And now to your Pac-10 best of the rest, Mike Bellotti's Oregon Ducks, whose team was lucky in a controversial win over Oklahoma last year. That probably cost the Sooners a shot at the national championship. But if they're lucky this year, they'll be lucky and good. Four and five, they started out last season, but they bring in Chip Kelly to tweak the spread offense. David Dixon is the most dangerous scrambler in the league. So they've got offense for sure, and Oregon is hoping for more than luck this year. We're running the same system, same plays, but we're trying to do it in a little bit different mode. And so I, I think we're going to find out. We have some growing pains and some issues to take care of in fall camp. They tell you're most overrated in the Pac-10, Jeff Tedford's Cal Bears. He's got Nate Longshore and Deshaun Jackson on the offense. Yeah, but he doesn't have Marshawn Lynch on offense, and he doesn't have Damian Hughes back on defense. When you lose two player of the year talents like that, it's going to be hard to replace. Justin Forsett's the tailback first in line to replace Marshawn Lynch. But on the defensive side, where there could be even more questions, Matthew Malele is there. Matthew Malele is there, but what else is there to bring in? When you lose eight starters on one unit, you cannot replace them in one season. Your most underrated team in the Pac-10, the Arizona State, now coached by Dennis Erickson. And Rudy Carpenter is the quarterback he inherits. Well, Dennis gets to work on his suntan after a year out in Idaho, but Rudy Carpenter must return to 2005 form. 13 interceptions last year really hurt that squad. And that was Dirk Cutter's mistake a year ago and cost Sam Keller to leave. Free safety, Josh Barrett is there on defense. I like Josh Barrett, probably the best hands of any defensive back in the Pac-10 conference. As we look at your projected order of finish at the top of the Pac-10, no surprise seeing USC there, but the Cal Golden Bears, there's something else other than football keeping them from being number one. If they want to keep Jeff Tedford in the fold past this year, they're going to have to drastically upgrade those facilities. Tedford has been screaming left and right for better facilities and also a better stadium. Nobody's moving to Berkeley. We take a look at the rest of the projected order of finish in the Pac-10 and your projected defensive player from the year, the linebacker from USC. But an offensive player we do want to discuss is back at Arizona State, running back Ryan Torian. This is a ball player that came from the junior college ranks, started the last eight games of the season, averaged 133 yards per game rushing. If Carpenter can't get the aerial attack going, Erickson has himself a pounder to get that ball going. We do want to include non-BCS Division 1A schools and Dave P as we get ready to look at your top 10 there, your cream of the crop. And we talked about at the top of the telecast, Hawaii. Hawaii with Colt Brennan. If anybody calls this kid a dink and dunk quarterback, I will spank them. 42 pass completions last year of over 25 yards or longer. Could you imagine having a down year in 2007 if he only throws for 50 touchdowns? Or <laughs> after those 58 a year ago as we continue to look at your top 10 non-BCS, your most overrated. Notre Dame. The big man has to replace 13 starters. He's breaking in a new quarterback in Jimmy Klaus, and he's dealing with the secondary that was the worst in college football last year. On September 15th against Michigan, BCS title hopes are ending for Notre Dame. Could be a long year for Charlie White. Now, countdown to college football, benefiting the foundation fighting blindness presents seeing into the future with Dave T. And of all the non-BCS players, Dave T, the one you have been more excited about than any other is offensive tackle Heath Benedict of Little Division II Newberry College in South Carolina. Ask any coach what he wants to find in life. He'll tell you he's a good woman and a quality offensive tackle, and Coach Willis has both down there. Heath Benedict is probably the best small college talent that I have seen since Shannon Sharp was catching passes at Savannah State. Six foot four, 340 pounds, 500 pound burn press, 492 in a 40 yard dash. I predict, folks, if this kid does not go into the top five of the draft, no offensive tackle will go before him. Wow, top five from Division II, possibly. Now, here's more on Foundation Fighting Blindness. 
Hi, I'm Nancy Kerrigan. Fighting blindness and vision loss has always been important to me. Maybe you remember my mom trying so hard to see me skate. Her struggle inspired me to work with the Foundation Fighting Blindness, and so did the story of this special family. I kind of wonder when I'm going to go blind, like 30 or 20. It will eventually happen. Without the Foundation Fighting Blindness, we would just be lost. Funding critical research is the key mission of the Foundation Fighting Blindness. We're seeking cures for diseases such as retinitis pigmentosa, Leber's congenital amaurosis, Usher syndrome, and macular degeneration. I pray to God about it, like that people will find a cure, that I won't go blind until I'm pretty old. That way I've seen a lot of things. Please join me in helping the Foundation Fighting Blindness lead the charge to save and restore sight. Call 800-235-4004 or visit fightblindness.org. Thank you. Up next, the players who are first in line to strike the pose and reach the Downtown Athletic Club. Countdown to College Football is back in a moment. Hangovers affect millions of responsible social drinkers. Research shows the culprit is a chemical called acetaldehyde, believed to be 30 times more toxic than alcohol itself. Introducing Cheers Hangover Formula, named the best hangover cure, Jane Magazine says each drink produces toxic buildup in your body. Cheers helps flush it out so you won't feel like crap the next day. So-called hangover remedies like Chaser consist of activated charcoal and have no effect on alcohol. Cheers' proven science-based formula helps combat hangovers before the damage is done. Trying is believing. Cheers has made a huge difference in my life because I can actually socially drink now with friends and family and I'll never have another drink again without Cheers. My job sometimes calls for me to drink with clients, but with Cheers, I never miss a beat at work the next day. Cheers is a safe and side effect free nutrition supplement, but does not affect inebriation or lower BAC. Enjoy responsibly. Call 1-800-470-9795 right now or go to CheersHangover.com. Think before you drink. Order Cheers now. Downtown to College Football has been brought to you by Topperson. Heal the damage that causes the pain. For more, visit them at topperson.com. Buy the Florida National Championship DVD. Celebrate the Florida Gators' historic national championship victory. Order your copy of National Champions by calling 877-208-4567. Downtown to Sports is proud to support Foundation Fighting Blindness. For more information, go to www.fightblindness.org. Welcome back to the Topperson Sports Desk as we get ready to wrap things up on Countdown to College Football. Paul Crane alongside Dave T. Thomas and the Heisman Trophy is college football's highest individual honor. It's determined on the field, Dave T., but before the season's first snap, we've got some players that we should all keep an eye on, starting with Arkansas tailback Darren McFadden. No better running back in the game, possibly no better ball player in the game than Darren McFadden. Imagine what he's done out there, 117 yards a game and sharing time with Felix the Cat Jones. And that's not a problem at all. There's no denying that McFadden has jaw-dropping ability, which sometimes even drops his jaw. You know, sometimes I, I think about it, but like, how you just do that right there, but when you're running the ball and just playing, you don't think about it, but after the play, if you look at it, you be like, I just actually did that. Another player that will have the eye of Heisman voters, USC quarterback John David Booty. Yeah, but John David Booty has probably a greater supporting cast than Clark Gable had him gone with the win. If he doesn't win it over here, I mean, we're looking at a mediocre quarterback. USC has had three of the last five Heisman winners, and Booty could make it four of six. Another Heisman hopeful out at Hawaii, quarterback Colt Brennan, who had those NCAA record 58 touchdown passes a year ago. His numbers are simply gaudy, but unless you have a bunch of insomniac voters for the Heisman Trophy, they'll never get to see him. He is up very late starting times in terms of East Coast time, but Brennan decided to come back for his senior season. We can't wait to see what he's got for an encore. Well, I think, you know, as far as following up, I guess the, the best way would be not to lose. And, um, you know, I would give up a lot of those, you know, um, you know, touchdowns and stuff like that for, you know, three more victories. And uh, this year, that's, you know, what I'm trying to do is, is to have that complete season and be that kind of 
quarterback who knows, go, knows how to go out there and get the job done and win football games. Well, JT, as we look at some of your other Heisman hopefuls, a player we haven't spoken about yet at number six there, the tailback from Oregon, Jonathan Stewart. 17th in the nation in all-purpose yardage, 6th in the nation in kickoff returns, 10 touchdowns on the ground. He says everything but sell popcorn in the stands. Well, as we look at some more potential Heisman hopefuls, how about a guy we saw briefly the wide receiver at Texas, Lima Swede. The biggest playmaking wide receiver in the Big 12 Conference. That's the reason Colt McCoy has matured as well as he has. I think he's a real candidate for the Bolitnikoff Award, award in particular. Now, perhaps the best non-conference game of the year will come in week two when Virginia Tech plays at LSU. If Tech goes with the emotion early in the season after what happened on campus over here, LSU will not be playing here. Well, we will just have to wait and see. College football is always unpredictable, and we cannot wait to get to it. Thanks for joining us, everyone, for this countdown to college football. Now for Dave T. Thomas and our entire countdown crew, I'm Paul Crane. We thank you for watching. Enjoy your season, and keep your eyes on Countdown to Sports. So long, everybody. For more on the conference breakdowns and Dave T's analysis, be sure to visit youtube.com slash stargamestv.